Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mack with five good news stories. Good news, the world's largest hot dog has arrived in Times Square. This is a public art installation called Hot Dog in the City. It's 65 feet long. It tops the world record for largest hot dog sculpture. You'll find it on Broadway and 46th. It's equipped with hydraulics, a confetti cannon, and a deeper message. Hydraulics will periodically turn the hot dog sculpture upright towards the sky. Once in that position, confetti will burst from the top of it, mimicking the Times Square New Year's Eve celebration. The goal of the installation is to call attention to broader topics facing the city and the nation, like the politics of street vending, immigration, consumption, capitalism, and class. The sculpture might also stir up questions about American hypermasculinity and showmanship, as well as the underbelly of the meat industry. Wow, this is deep. A panel of comedians, activists, and food historians will dive into those topics at, to be frank, Hot Dog Summit. That's at Times Square's Town Hall on June 9th. More events, condiment debates, a hot dog eating contest, and a hottest dog dash hound beauty pageant. Hot Dog in the City will be on view through June 13th. Good news, scientists have figured out a way to grow synthetic diamonds in just 150 minutes. That could be bad news for natural diamonds. Nope, they're not listening. The researchers created a blend of gallium, iron, nickel, and silicon, then fitted it inside a graphite chamber that rapidly heated and cooled the metal, all while exposing it to a mixture of methane and hydrogen gas. Hey, scientists, uh, appreciate this. Could you guys work on climate change, please? The carbon atoms from the methane gas seeped into the melted metal and became seeds for the diamonds. Diamond fragments began appearing after just 15 minutes. 150 minutes later, diamonds. The researchers point out Oppenheimer is 180 minutes. Nice job by Zach Bryan. He helped in tornado relief efforts for Nebraskans before performing back-to-back concerts. After the recent tornadoes, the community rallied. Churches and businesses opened their doors for shelter. Volunteers came out to help clean up the devastation. One of those volunteers, Zach Bryan, Nebraska native, who happened to be in the area for his Quentin Time tour. Zach said, as an American and someone who lived in Omaha for some pretty formidable years, I want to offer some honest prayers and hopes to the communities affected by the tornadoes that tore through them. The band and I are standing with you guys as we're playing some shows in Omaha. I'm sorry to anyone who's having to deal with picking up the pieces of their homes and their lives. Without taking credit from the thousands of people lending a hand who have roots here, we love you so much and we'll do all we can do to help. On Facebook, Mandy wrote, I can't say I'm a country music fan or a Zach Bryan fan, but I will call myself a fan now due to his serving hard off the stage. I like this next guy, my kind of guy. He got annoyed at random members of the public cutting across his lawn. So what did he do? He set up an automatic sprinkler on his lawn. Any time somebody stepped on his lawn, the sprinklers went off. (laughs) He shared this on TikTok, 50 million views. Not everyone agrees with Johnny Mac. One person commented, how is this hurting you? It's grass. Chill out. All right. I keep this program clean. This next story is just a hair naughty. I will keep it clean and I will uh, wink at the microphone to let you know about the naughty part. All right. So stay with me here. But if you're sensitive, I don't want to betray our trust here. But this is fun. Have you been paying attention to the Internet has been trying to figure out this song? Back in 2021, a user named Carl92 posted a 17-second snippet of an 80s-style music song, and they were trying to figure out what it was. Carl92 said they found the clip between a bunch of very old files and a DVD backup. The song sounds very, very 80s, and people started calling it Everyone Knows That. At least 48,000 people in a subreddit trying to figure out, all right, what is this song? People look through their archives. They're trying to figure out the artist, the album, the recording studio. TikTokers made fake videos in 80s garb, imagining themselves as their moms and aunts jamming to the track back in the days. Conspiracy theories claim the song was either AI generated or some sort of viral marketing stunt for a modern indie band. Rolling Stone magazine and The Guardian got involved. The internet decided the title of the song was Ulterior Motives. Uh, The phrase appears in the 17 second clip. Well, the mystery has been solved. One internet user, here comes the naughty part, uh, went through their collection of films that they have, and you can find the song at the one hour, seven minute mark in a movie titled Angels of Passion. You paying attention? Angels of Passion from 1986. The description, two angels are sent back to Earth to provide some 
satisfaction to the humans. <laughs> uh, oh, well, at least we know where the song is. And those are your five good news stories for today. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy the program, tell a friend about it. They might like it too. Let me know how the movie is. And if you like these episodes ad free, <laughs> you can subscribe uh, via Apple Podcasts. Open up the show on the Apple Podcasts app for four ninety nine a month. You can get this show and some other shows, including Daily Comedy News. I host that one seven days a week. You can get them commercial free four ninety nine a month. Or why don't you just test drive it for thirty days? Be like, hey, this is cool, or hey, not worth the four ninety nine. I'm not offended. I don't care. Try it out though. All right, have an awesome day and enjoy Angels of Passion.